Jabberwonky's Garage and today I'll be showing you the very very basics of what you'll need to start your own miniature battle bot. So this will cover all of the electronics that you need for your drive system and your operating system. This won't include the motor for the weapon or this is mainly for if you're building a pusher bot or if you just want to get your drive up and running before you start your um, your weapon. So first of all, to control your bot, you're going to need a remote. And here I have a two, a stick controller with the throttle on the left, only because I would rather, or actually no, sorry, the it is on the right and the throttle is on the right and the control is on the left. I like this because I'm a left-hander, but you can order either one, it's up to you. The model that I'm going to be using in this demonstration is the Trinogy IS, or the i6, sorry. This is a great little controller, I picked it up for $40, it was on the cyber sale on Hobby King, and I will be linking the where you can get this remote and it also comes with its own receiver which goes straight into the bot which is really handy because it comes with detailed instructions on how to pair it if you're still unsure you can find many videos online so I'll be linking that down in the description for where you can find your own so next of all what you'll need is drive and what I'm going to be using are these micro N20 motors. These are geared down, if you can see, by tiny little gears on a brushed motor and goes out to the axle which connects straight to the wheel. Um, I'm, I will be running um, motors that are geared to 50 RPM and I'm going to be running two so I can run a tank drive which essentially means 
that you've got one on either side and you either move both forward to go forward, both back to go back, one forward and one back to go left and the other to go right. It, and that's the simplest way to control a bot without using a servo or any bulky kind of turning mechanisms. So it's perfect for your smaller bots or from, ranging from roughly about your 150 gram ant weights all the way to your 1.36 kilo beetle weights. So next you're going to need something to control these motors and what I'm, I'm going to be using are these brushed ESCs from Trinity and they are 20 amp brushed ESCs and they are great because you've got the side that connects straight to the battery the side that connects straight to the motors and then you've got your signal lead that goes straight to the straight to the receiver and what's great about these is that they have built in BEC which means that it'll change the voltage from your battery over to a workable 5 volt that goes straight through the signal wire into, into your receiver which will be powering it and will also power any servos that you have plugged into it but if you are running multiple um, ESCs like I am that all have built in BEC you just want to make sure that you take out that red wire and that's pretty simple there's a small tag underneath the, the, con the metal contact in the bulkhead and if you pull that up ever so gently and just slowly pull the red wire out that should just come out and the reason for that is to make sure that the B that it turns off the BEC and in the in the ESC and doesn't overload the receiver with multiple sources of power. So now the drive is out the way. Let's talk about the power. The power I'm going to be using is this tiny Zippy 350 milliamp LiPo battery. It is perfect because it is lightweight, small and can fit in most of your small bots. It has a JST connector so they're nice and small and you can find them at any of your local hobby stores or electronic stores and if you can't find them pretty simple to get a hold of online. So and for regulation and rules for these bots you also need a kill switch and a kill switch essentially plugs directly from into the battery and then has two wires that go out to your ESCs or your receiver and it, when it's off it, has, it makes sure that there's no power to any of the bot and if you accidentally touch one of the sticks on your, on your remote it won't accidentally trigger the weapon which is a big deal if you're in the pits and the weapon spins up because then there's no way to stop it without unplugging the battery so this is a simple um, switch that just goes back and forth you've got on and off it fits nice and tight I've got a bit of velcro on the bottom there just to give it some cushioning on the big impacts and I could put a bit of super glue on the bottom there stick it down and then I can just use the velcro and pull it off and put it back on again when need be or if it breaks or something like that so what would you do for wiring? So wiring it up is pretty simple. So like I said before, the kill switch plugs directly into the battery and then the kill switch goes off to all of your ESCs. So if you've got two ESCs, one for each motor, you connect the black to black, just like that, black to black, solder them up and the red to red, which is pretty much connecting the two positives and the two negatives together which will then, with those two connections, you plug, you solder directly onto the red and black, just like you did for the other. So black, black and black, and then red, red and red. And that'll essentially just be the kill switch for the entire bot. And also you'll be running them, in, then that means you're running them in parallel and you won't be halving the voltage. You'll be using full voltage, but just a higher amp, amp rate out of the battery. And by the way, I'll also be linking where you can get this battery from down in the description below. So then once you wire, wire those up, what you do, you 
Um, you get your, your motors, you wire them up, so you find which one is your positive and which is your negative. Not sure if you can see that there, but there is a small little plus, which means that that's the, that's the um, positive side and that's which one you'd want to be connecting your red wire to on your on the on the motor side of the ESC and then once all of it is is all plugged in and soldered up you get your signal wires you have one of them with the red cable and one without I haven't done the one without yet and you just simply plug it into the corresponding channel for me that would be channels 2 and channels 4 and that's all you have to do and if you haven't already binded the receiver to the transmitter um, there's a lot of YouTube channels out there that will easily show you how to do it it takes 30 seconds to a minute and it's pretty simple once you get the hang of it so I hope you take something away from this video and that I didn't go too quick for everything and I hope that this video has helped people get into this hobby which is a great hobby to have because you'll meet some amazing people the community is great you can find forums online where there's so many helpful people for if you ever run into any trouble there's meets generally in most countries um, and even if you're thinking about doing it but you're not too sure go along to one of the uh, See if you can find a fight where they're fighting some of the ant weights or beetle weights. Because here I have a chassis for my um, for a one pound UK ant weight, and this is um, just the husk at the moment. I still need to put all these electronics in and get my my uh, weapon system from eBay. But other than that. Um, I can't wait to get this up and running and I should hopefully have a video of the first test and run of this. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.